Welcome to Serving Up Plumbing with me, David Butler. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, trenchless technology. That covers a lot of different things and we're going to talk about the four main categories of it today. And oddly enough, Milestone does all four of them. Before we get to that, please hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know your thoughts about what you see today and what you'd like to see in the future. Trenchless technology. So I mentioned we're going to talk about the four main kinds of trenchless technology. Well, let's start off with number one, pipe bursting. Pipe bursting means that we're going to put a new pipe through an old pipe, but it's not going to be reducing the size. It's actually going to be breaking the old pipe out of the way and putting a new one in place. We do this one way with sewer piping and we do it another way with water piping. So we can do both water and sewer with pipe bursting. We can actually even do gas lines in the right situation. Number two, pipe lining. And pipe lining to me is the future of plumbing. We're gonna do so many things with pipe lining in the future. Now pipe lining's been around for a while, but the newer technology that we're using nowadays, which is called cured in place ultraviolet pipe lining, has only been around since about 2015 to 2020. The one we use was patented in 2020. So we use the LR3 light ray. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute also. So as a quick recap, pipe bursting, we have water bursting and sewer bursting. So that's one and two. Third, we have pipe lining, which is UV lining or another type of lining we'll talk about. And number four is actually pipe coating. We're actually getting away from pipe coating. It kind of came on strong and now it's kind of fading out. We do it still on very specific situations, but pipe coating means that we're actually putting a liner inside the pipe of liquid epoxy, kind of smoothing it out, smeared it in the pipe. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but that's the four types that we're gonna talk about and kind of an overview of trenchless technology. What does that mean? That means we don't have to dig the whole yard up to put it in. Sometimes you might have to dig a hole at one end and a hole at the other, and sometimes just a hole at one end, and sometimes you might not have to dig a hole at all, but it's trenchless technology. It means we might have to dig a little bit, but nothing like digging up the whole yard. Doesn't everybody like that? Less invasive surgery, right? Just like in medicine. All right, so let's break it down a little more. Let's get into depth on pipe bursting for sewer. Well, I've been involved in pipe bursting for sewer for over 30 years. We started doing it way back when we needed to replace Orangeburg sewer pipe and we were putting new pipe inside old pipe. Orangeburg, we talk a little bit about if you'll look at the short that we've got connected to this. And it was an old tar paper line. Well, it started collapsing and it was easy and soft to pull something through and break it out of the way. So we started off doing just Orangeburg pipe and we would replace that old Orangeburg that was put in in the 40s, 50s, and 60s and put in new fusion welded HDPE, which is high density polyethylene pipe, right in the old pipe. Fusion welded means it has no joints. That means the only joints on this pipe were at the street and at your house. Everything in the middle, no way roots can ever grow in it. No way anything can ever hurt it. It's good and solid, strong pipe, can't crush. Nothing affects it but ultraviolet light. And if it's buried under the ground, the sun's not gonna hurt it very much, is it? So that's what was so awesome about this. Well. Fast forward 20 years and we've got all our cast iron pipes are now starting to rot out because of all the pipe drain cleaners and that sort of thing we've put in it all these years that eat them up and the acids and things that go down the drain. And sometimes it's just the dirt that eats it up, the alkalinity in it and everything. Well, the pipes get eat up, we need to put a new pipe in there. Well, now we actually use pipe bursting on all the cast iron and we have been now for 15, 20 years, but it was originally used just on the Orangeburg. And of course that was because it was prior to the cast iron going bad. So it's a wonderful way to put in a new sewer line with no joints, no way roots can ever grow in it. In an old pipe, you don't have to tear up your yard, you don't have to cut concrete, you don't have to replace your driveway, dig up your bushes, awesome way of doing it. Now, you can't do it every time. There are things that prevent you from being able to do pipe bursting. You can't do pipe bursting if you have a belly in the line, which means it's got a sag in the pipe. It will not straighten out a sag in the pipe unless it's a very, very small one. You can't put it in with more than 345s. Now, if there's just two or 345s in the line, it will actually pull through them and kind of just curve the pipe through it and snake it through there and make its own new pathway. 
as long as it's not too hard of dirt. But it is possible. All these things have to be taken into consideration. So it can't be used on everything. We've even used it at certain times under the slab. Again, it's a very specific situation. But even so, if you can do something without busting concrete or sawing concrete or digging it up, trenchless technology can be wonderful. So that's kind of where pipe bursting comes in for sewer. Now, along about the same time when this came along, we were also doing what we call pipe pulling, and we kind of just do that to differentiate. It's still pipe bursting on water services. So that means if you have a PVC or a plastic water service, and where this really came into play was the wonderful invention of Quest in the 80s, when they put in every home that used to always be copper tubing in the yard, they started replacing it with a pipe that was called Quest, which was made out of polybutylene. And there was nothing wrong with polybutylene, but the Quest pipe was actually made too thin. The walls were very thin, and it started failing within one to two years major class action lawsuit. There's still a lot of it out there around and we still see a lot of it. Therefore, we started pipe pulling and pipe bursting Quest Pipe. If you ever wanna look that up, it's Q-E-S-T. So, we could put a new pipe through an old pipe, just like with the sewer, except we're working on a lot smaller size. We're not doing two, three, four inch pipes. Now we're doing three quarter, one inch, one and a half, two inch pipes and we're actually bursting the old pipe out of the way with this old plastic yard service and putting in a new pipe. Again, we're using a solid piece of pipe, but this comes in a roll of about 300 feet, sometimes 100. We can roll a whole new pipe in there, make a connection at the street in the meter box, make a connection at the house. You've got a brand new yard service. We give it a 15 year warranty here at Milestone, and you've got a great replacement without much digging in your yard. It's awesome. I love trenchless technology, and I think you will too. Next, pipe lining. Now, we've been in pipe lining now for about five years. That's about how long the process we use has been patented. They got it patented in 2020. We use a particular system that is by Permaliner Waterline Renewal Technologies that is called the Light Ray. There's a lot of different brands out there that make it. New Flow, all kinds of companies across the country. I just got back from the wet show not too long ago in February, and tremendous amount of companies making great products. But we started out with the Permaliner and we've really had great success with it and continue to use it. Now, pipe lining has been around for quite a while. I learned on it first in 2005, but the original pipe lining was what we called cured in place epoxy. So in the older liner, you would mix a hardener and a resin and it came in different curing times. The thing about this too was you had to get the pipe completely clean, which we still have to get the pipe very clean and we use Pocote Millers and things of that nature we can go into more later. But you have to clean the pipe up, you have to put the liner in, get the liner exactly in the right place, use a resin and a hardener of either three hours or six hours or 12 hours or whatever you figured out. And if you don't mix that with the right amounts, it hardens too fast or it hardens too slow or it doesn't harden at all. You don't get the liner in place. Now, don't get me wrong. There were guys out there that were incredible at this and they did it a lot and did it really well. I trained on it, as I said, in 2005. I love the system, but I knew everybody was gonna have to have a lot of practice and a lot of training if we were gonna do that. The other thing I could see though, there was a really good opportunity for failure here. And if you fail on it, you gotta either go back and dig the whole line up or you've gotta use a really good miller and chew all that line out and start over. I didn't like that possibility of failure. Well, bam, 2020 comes along and Light Ray comes along LR3. And what do they do? They use the technology that dentists use every day. We call it cured in place UV pipelining. And that's what we do here at Milestone up to four inch pipe. Cities are using it in very large pipes for relining their sewer mains. They don't have to dig up the streets. What an awesome thing, right? You don't have worse traffic than we already have. So we're using the LR3 light ray. As I said, it was from a dentist. You have your fillings in your mouth that they stick the little ultraviolet light in and cure the filling right after they drill it and put it in. They're not putting the metals in your mouth anymore or those things. It's actually a ceramic filling. The light cures it. Well, we have a long little stretch of UV LED lights that we slide inside the pipe and we cure that liner in place right then. Now, one thing I didn't mention a minute ago was on 
the epoxy coated liners, as I said, three, six, 12 hour curing, you had to let that cure those hours before you could ever run any water through it. It had to be completely dry before you could do it, everything. Well, with the UV liner, it doesn't have to be totally dry. It will cure in place. We can have a liner in place and done within about an hour, if not less. And we can turn the water on right away. We can go flush that toilet immediately after we cure that liner out. Is that not awesome? There's no wait time. You don't have to wait to go to the bathroom till tomorrow. That's a great thing, right? You don't have to go use the neighbor's house, the showers, anything else. UV cured in place liners, to me, are the wave of the future. They're made generally out of a pipe that is a fiberglass reinforced resin. It's called GRP, glass reinforced pipe. They originally thought this pipe was good for maybe 50 years, and now we're hearing that it might be good for 100 to 200 years. I'm impressed by this stuff. I even took it and shattered a piece of PVC off of it when I lined a piece of PVC in here in the office. And I'll show you that when we do our specifics on this on another video. But I shattered that piece of pipe off of it, and I hit that with a hammer. It just flexed with it. The PVC was shattered all to pieces. The actual UV liner just flexed and never cracked or anything. I couldn't believe that that it was that good a liner. There are so many uses we're coming out with for this, and hopefully uh, it's just gonna get better and better, the liner, the process, simpler, so that with just like surgeries they do these days, we're being less invasive on your homes. They cost less to do, so if you're doing less invasiveness, you're doing less cost. Just like if you're having a surgery, if they can do a scope, rather than cutting you open and having to go in, it's a lot less heal time, it's a lot less cost, and it saves you the customer money. Our fourth and last one, and as I mentioned, is not used as much as it was, but we still use it some, is pipe coating. Now, pipe coating came out quite a while back. I'm not even sure what date, but it originally came out for coating sewer lines, and then they used it for coating old water lines in buildings. And it's literally a process of, again, you're gonna mix a resin and a hardener, and between brushes and air and cleaning pipes and that sort of thing, you're basically gonna put a liquid epoxy liner all on the inside coating of a pipe, and then it's gonna cure in place, and you're gonna have basically a new liner inside your pipe. Now, the epoxy cured in place coatings aren't as durable as the liners, the fiberglass liners, the cured in place liners, the epoxy coated liners. They're not as strong because they don't have the fiberglass reinforcement in them or the sock or the, the fibers that go in them. They are just a liquid epoxy that goes in and gets spread around on the pipe. It kind of looks like pancake batter when it goes in. And as it goes in, it mixes the resins and the hardeners together at the same time, smooths it out on the pipe, and it cures fairly quickly. I mean, it hardens within about five to 10 minutes. Sewer lines you can use pretty quickly with it. Of course, the downside is you do have to have it 100% dry to get it to go in that sewer line. If it's wet, it'll mess up your uh, coating. The water lines, they use it a lot in older buildings up north where you've got a lot of galvanized pipe that is starting to deteriorate, especially the larger ones like when they go up to two inch or something of that nature. They can go down to three quarter and even half inch is my understanding, but it's a very technical process. It's gotta be very exact the way you do it or you're gonna come out with a unsatisfactory result. So we do pipe coatings on some cast iron spot repairs every now and then, but since the UV liner came out, we've almost totally done away with our pipe coating. And again, UV pipe lining to me is the wave of the future. Pipe bursting is something we're gonna to continue to use. A lot of jobs we use pipe bursting in the yard, pipe lining under the house, or a combination of two. We spot repair with pipe liners. The technology coming along with trenchless technology is just incredible. And it's only gonna get better and better for you, the customer out there, because the technology makes it cost less for you and less damage to your property. Man, if you can't tell, I'm stoked about trenchless technology, almost as much as tankless water heaters. I hope now you have a better understanding of trenchless technology. Please watch the videos that are coming out in the future on it. Stay subscribed to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. And let me know your experiences with pipe lining, pipe coating, and pipe bursting. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching Serving Up Plumbing. And don't you ever forget, tell your friends the butler did it.